Hey guys, I'm back and I hope you haven't missed me too much. I noticed that I've been, it's been quite a few days ever since I last posted a video and it's been partly thanks to my university projects and stuff. So I've been working kind of a lot harder than I thought I would be. And because again, there are some things that popped up kind of in the last minute. And uh, what I've been doing for the last two weeks essentially was the report for my kind of my final, uh, my final project, if you will. And uh, I was working on it. It's actually finished today. So this is the reason why I think I'll be able to work on it a little bit better. And uh, to be uh, kind of to give you guys an idea, it's essentially a, a project on 5G and essentially the cybersecurity property. So, you know, take a look at what the current architecture and the current standards, what they entail in terms of, for example, threats and in terms of uh, trust and how privacy is achieved on the 5G system. So overall, it's a, it's kind of a passion project of mine because I really love this subject. I'm not doing it on my own, but uh, we both, I think uh, both of us that are working on this project, we'd like it very much. And we learned a whole lot. We wrote uh, about 100 pages of uh, documentation and we made figures. And I really like this figure. It doesn't really matter what it means. But uh, there there's a lot of figures that I've been writing. In, and this brings me to my point of this video, I guess, which is... Um, Sometimes, you know, GIMP just doesn't cut it when you want to make diagrams, for example, such as this one. This is also a nice diagram. And uh, if you want to make a diagram such as this one, for example. And what I recommend now is a tool that I've been using for a few a few weeks, which is called uh, Draw.io. And there are two names, actually. There is, if you go on Google and you type in Draw.io, you're going to get redirected to it normally. There is also a, you can also call it a Diagrams app. I don't know which one of them is the kind of correct name, but uh, just to show you guys how it works, I'm going to make a new diagram. And this is something that I'm going to make for my final presentation. So it's something that I, that actually has a function, I would say in my report. So I'm going to make it a generic architecture and I'll show you guys what I want to do as we go. So essentially I have kind of this figure over here and uh, this figure is essentially kind of the high level architecture for the 5G system. And in fact, this is specific to 5G. You can notice that there are some functions. Again, there are some names essentially that are specific to 5G. What I want is I want to make a generic version of this drawing. So we'll, we'll, kind, of, we'll kind of try to rebuild this as if it were a, a generic drawing. And in the process, I'll explain to you how I'm doing stuff so that you can uh, kind of get an idea again. So we'll begin with an empty drawing, and this is Draw.io, by the way. So you have, again, uh, it's essentially, there are two architectures for it. You can even either find it on the cloud. Here I'm using it on the internet. But you also have the option of downloading it, in fact, and uh, how you download it. I think uh, if you go either on the, the version, you can, you can search them up on GitHub, and you can download kind of the binaries. And they have, you can either compile it from source or you can kind of download the app image if you're if you're on Linux, for example, you can run it directly from the app image. So this is the introduction again, and what this allows you, you is it allows you to make a kind of a diagrams and a fluxograms and the UML diagrams, for example, if you're into programming. Also, networking diagrams they are very easy to do. So you have icons for essentially everything. Notice if I want, I can look up a router here on the left, for example, and I get some cool icons for a router. This is a router, for example, this is another router. And uh, I, everything is kind of point and click. So notice that once I hover over this, I can also, I also have the option of pulling a, an arrow from it. And I can connect these two guys, for example. And once I click, click on the arrow, I can actually kind of manipulate how the arrow works. So if I go here on the right, uh, you notice that there are a few options. I can make it so that the arrow is kind of dashed, for example. I can make it a straight line. I can also make it so that it goes two ways such by adding this second one arrow here this changes essentially kind of the um, kind of the uh, again notice that this changes kind of, kind of the size of the arrow and everything here is very customizable you can assign for example colors to stuff so the colors you can either uh, apply them like this or you can choose again using hexadecimal uh, kind of uh, rgb uh, kind of values so this is something interesting. Again, you can also add text to your stuff. So if I double click, I think I'm going to get a text box and this is an arrow. I can I can put text on top of everything, essentially. This is an arrow. An arrow, sorry, I can't write today. Uh, and uh, 
there's a, there's a lot of things that you can do with it. Again, we're going to now try to recreate this one drawing just to give you guys an idea. So while we go, I, I might as well just explain a little bit. Most of you have a, I'm, I'm supposing anyway, that most of you have a smartphone. So I'm going to take a smartphone here and uh, whichever one, this one. And this smartphone, whenever you bring it up, there's a lot of things that happen under the hood. And we usually call these things kind of signaling. And in fact, this, what signaling does is it essentially establishes connections between your kind of uh, user equipment. In this case, we're calling the smartphone uh, user equipment. And in fact, I'm going to put this as UE for user equipment. Uh, just know that this is essentially any mobile phone, anything that's connected to the 4G or to the 5G when it comes out, etc. And uh, you connect to the system by means of a access network, in fact. And this access network obviously is going to be comprised of uh, the different the different base stations. So a base station in this case is going to be, in fact, an antenna. And do I have some better ones? This antenna, for example. So whatever this one. Uh, so in fact, you're going. Whenever you're out on the street, for example, you can look around and you usually find a lot of ba uh, base stations, which are kind of those high cell, cell towers. And um, they essentially serve to give you connectivity. So you can imagine, again, that the, the whole country that you're at is divided into several different cells. And uh, each cell is going to be kind of representing a, a specific region. So let's suppose that this is, these are all perfect cells. And... We're dividing again the country into different cells, and each cell is going to have at its center, it's going to have a kind of a little antenna. I can notice that this is behind of the hexagon because I put it after. What I can do is I can press Ctrl Shift F to bring it to the front. So this is kind of useful. And you can imagine again that you'll have several cells, and each one of the cells is going to have a base station at the center. This is going to be common across every single uh, every single mobile technology, and we usually call this the sorry the RAN. We usually call this the radio air access or radio area, depending the radio area network. And in fact, this is what provides you essentially with the uh, with the antenna that transmits your data back to kind of a centralized place where you can do signaling and you can make calls and you can connect the internet, etc. This is all well and good, but after the, you have a RAN, you also need to put intelligence on top of it. And when I talk about intelligence, what I mean is usually, let's say that you have a user equipment and you want to connect to the internet once. Now you can do that very easily, just like having the antenna uh, and connect the antenna directly to the internet, but this is not effective. Because in fact, it would mean that whenever you change the antenna to uh, which you're using, or whenever you change the base station which you're occupying, whenever you change from one cell to another, you're going to get, for example, a different IP address, or you're going to get different, uh, you're going to have different quality of service values. We don't want that. What we want is we want everyone to kind of feel as if the uh, their experience remained the same and not lose connectivity, for example, when transmitting from one area to another. And in order to manage that, we use a core network, essentially. And this core is where kind of all the intelligence of the mobile system lies. So I'm going to put, uh, to put this in blue, and I'm going to call this core. I'm going to put it in bold also. And the core is what's going to have a few things. So it's going to have, for example, mobility management. And this is something that's common across all of the, all of the different technologies. If you take 1G, uh, 2G, maybe GSM. If you take uh, UMTS, which is 3G, or LTE, which is 4G. All of them have this thing in common, which is one thing, one server, that's centralized and that knows where each subscriber is and that is capable of managing the mobility of that man, of that uh, user. So this is usually one thing that exists. And there is also another thing that exists, which is called the anchor function. And this usually changes again when, uh, depending on where you are, uh, on which generation anyway you, you are using. So for example, if you're using 4G, the anchor function is going to be a little router called the, the S gateway. And it's going to be a router that is set in such a way that you can move as much as you want from one cell to another. But as long as you're the same subscriber, you're going to use the same kind of anchor function. And this anchor function is what's, is what's going to connect you to the internet later, for example. 
and uh, after you put after you put ma mobility management and anchor and the anchoring fun functionality in your system you can then make it so that you can connect it to a, uh, an external network and in fact you're not even forced to connect people to the internet usually if you have a mobile subscription you're going to want data connectivity so you're going to be connected to the internet but this is not necessarily the case again and 5g shows that there are some use cases where for example enterprises may buy a 5g subscription in such a way that they are provided with the connectivity to their own local area network so this is something to take into consideration you can use kind of the 5g as a little private network if you want if you have the means to do so if you have the infrastructure or if you have again the subscription and this this could already work as a very simple kind of uh, man, uh, system but what happens is that you usually have some kind of support uh, to this uh, experience because again uh, you you can also add management on top of this for example and by management i mean kind of adding such that the configuration steps and the management steps, for example, you can add a kind of a, a system to log what, uh, what the users are doing and uh, such that there, for example, there is no attacker currently attacking your network, etc. So you usually put a management plane on top of these two planes. And this is essentially the human interface to the system because the humans are not going to manipulate the core directly. The humans are not going to manipulate the radio area network directly. They are going to install these components and then they are going to manage them through this interface to the north kind of. So this is the basic idea again. And obviously all of this, this exists on top on an infrastructure and it exists on top of a network. So we usually call this the transport. And when you think of the transport network, you can think, you can think for example, of the different uh, of the different routers and of the firewalls and of the different kind of network level components that are going to link this antenna to all of the core elements to the server that's here to this to the router that's the anchor function so there is a whole kind of a router uh i'm going to make a drawing here and there is a whole kind of a infrastructure here in the middle that's essentially what guarantees this kind of service. So I'm going to put a bunch of routers here and I'm just going to link them like this. There you go. So this is kind of the basic idea. And this this system again is a functional one, but it, dep it depends on the assumption that there is only one op operator, one mobile operator in the whole in the whole country, in the whole region, etc. And this is usually not the case. What happens is that we have the necessity for a final uh, kind of a last building block to this generic architecture, which we call the interconnect plane. And the interconnect plane is kind of essentially what uh, is going to connect is essentially kind of we have the internet backbone, which interconnects essentially everything. Well, mobile operators have their own backbone, which we usually call the interconnect. And it's actually most of the time it's an IPX network. I won't get into much of the details. But it's essentially a backbone also made made of a router, so I can just put a bunch of routers here. And this essentially is going to route not the user plane traffic necessarily, but it's going to route uh, the the signaling between different mobile operators. So in fact, I'm, I can even put another block here, and I'm going to call this the core network of another core of home network. Because you can imagine again that this subscriber that we draw that we drew here, it's not necess uh, it does not need necessarily to be, for example, on its own home country. And in fact, this is what we call roaming. So, for example, a roaming subscriber is a subscriber that has left its original kind of country or its original region, and it's in the network belonging to another mobile operator. So you can still use data subscription if you were on roaming mode. But it depends again on how the different operators they they kind of negotiate this. So this is something that you need uh, to take into account again, and this is usually something that's done by means of an interconnect that links these kind of mobility management functions from one network again from the core of this operator to the core of another operator. For example, if you're roaming. Hey guys, so to conclude, I just wanted to show you what the finished kind of product looks like. I changed some of the fonts, I put stuff in a kind of bold face, and I also added some of the 
some little kind of uh, rectangles with functions for the different uh, for the different planes. So I also added this kind of a database icon so that it shows that again that there's, there is kind of a subscriber database in mobile networks. Uh, this is just again something that I wanted to do anyway for my for my project. I'm having a presentation coming up soon. I may even be able to publish the presentation. I'm not sure. It, I'll see how it goes. But anyway, this served. This, the purpose of this video, anyway, is, is more on the side of showing you what's possible with Joyo, and this is usually what I like to do on my channel. I like to give you guys ideas and then let you figure it out by yourselves. So this is kind of a good starting point. Again, another very useful feature before I go uh, of Joyo is the feature of kind of templating, and you can do templating kind of with uh, with uh, the scratch pad. So in fact, you can select anything on this. Um, on this kind of drawing and you can drag it onto the scratch pad. And when I say anything, I mean even sets of things. So for example, if I want to select this whole core box, I can even, I can either use again the rectangle select, which is going to select everything for me, or I could shift click on stuff in order to select them one by one. But notice that once I have that selected, I can drag it onto the scratch pad and now I have the whole thing as a template. So if I want, I can drop another core and I can make as many of them as I want. This is a very useful thing, and again, this is something that uh, you can use. Uh, the uh, you can use depending on how creative you are. So, if you if you have a very complex again diagram, you have the tools you need in order to make it the more intuitive and the fa uh, and the most uh, and the most easy to implement. I would say. So this is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.